let's talk about ovarian cysts. The term cyst can definitely stir up a ton of anxiety. Anytime I mention it when I'm scanning a patient, they'll look at me with a concerned facial expression and you know they're automatically worried that there's something sinister going on. But then I explained that the reality is that the word cyst simply means a space, and it's usually filled with fluid or sometimes a solid substance. And here's a surprising fact. Even a follicle, the structure of the bubbles of fluid that each hold an egg, and one is selected each month to be the one that ovulates an egg, those are technically cysts because they're filled with fluid. Follicular cysts are a normal part of our biology. They are functional and they can fluctuate throughout the menstrual cycle. And every now and then you'll have one that lingers, but it will generally speaking go away and resolve on its own. These are the structures we rely on for egg freezing and IVF, and they show up as black because that's how fluid shows up on an ultrasound. That is normal and expected. Now let's do a little tour of other frequently encountered types of benign cysts. These are things that I will often diagnose for the first time when I'm scanning a patient during their consult with me. So let's start with endometriomas. These are cysts that are filled with old blood. They're often termed chocolate cysts because old oxidized blood looks like dark brown chocolate. Um, there goes my craving. On ultrasound, they look grainy, they have a ground glass appearance, and they can even look kind of speckled with areas of calcification. And these can impact our ovarian function. They can be associated with DOR, and they can definitely be a sign of endometriomas that could be associated with infertility. And what to do really depends on the size and location. Then we have dermoid cysts. These are really weird and strange, yet fascinating. They are made from embryonic tissue, meaning there can be many different cell types present in these cysts. You can have a mixture of fat, hair, teeth, and then there could be liquid components to it. And they tend to be really fatty and therefore they're more prone to floating in the pelvic fluid that can be there. And they can be prone to twisting. This is a complication known as ovarian torsion. This is a surgical emergency where the ovary has to be surgically untwisted to restore blood supply. And this is why we will recommend patients preemptively get dermoid cysts removed if they're very large, especially over five centimeters. When it comes to treatment, the decision to do surgery and remove a cyst depends on many factors. Its size, the type of cyst, any associated symptoms like pelvic pain, or if it's interfering with someone's fertility. But surgery isn't always the best first step, and it's not always necessary. Surgically removing a cyst is not a decision that we take lightly because even in the best hands, whenever you're removing a cyst, you're most often going to inadvertently remove some healthy ovarian tissue surrounding the cyst, including those ovarian follicles in that tissue. And so it can predispose and put you at risk of diminished ovarian reserve, and that can make responding to fertility treatments, whether it be for IVF or egg freezing, a little bit more difficult. So if I'm planning to have a patient go through these types of treatments, I usually tell them it's better to do that if they can before removing the cyst, unless the cyst is very large, taking up so much space in the ovary, or it's making the ovary inaccessible. In some cases, a cyst is going to make it hard to even access the ovary for egg retrieval, and you may risk leaving some follicles behind, which we never want to do, uh, because you're trying to do it in a safe way where you don't want the cyst to leak or rupture or be punctured by the needle for egg retrieval, because this can lead to inflammation or even infection. So yes, the word cyst can sound very scary, but hopefully by understanding what they are, the different types, how they behave, will help to take fear out of the conversation. Many of the time we can just wait and watch. Most are manageable and with the right strategy, it shouldn't stand in the way of your fertility goals. Have you ever been diagnosed with an ovarian cyst? I wanna hear your experience if you're comfortable sharing in the comments.